Welcome to It's All About Student Success, Fulfilling the Baker College Mission. After you complete this session, there is a brief quiz you need to take to check for understanding. During this session, you will be introduced to the following beliefs and practices that guide Baker College as a leading institution of higher education. The first is Baker College Mission and 11 Guiding Principles, Institutional Student Learning Outcomes, or ISLOs, Academic Improvement Model Initiative, or AIM, in the three domains of quality teaching and learning, assessment, and curriculum. Canvas Professional Expectations, Bring Your Own Device, or BYOD, and the Faculty Growth and Evaluation Process. The mission of Baker College is to provide quality higher education and training, which enable graduates to be successful throughout challenging and rewarding careers. As an institution of higher education, academics is at the heart of what we do and why we're here. Ultimately, everything we do comes down to student learning. So, what can we do to best prepare our students for challenging and rewarding careers in the 21st century? 21st century skills in many ways look and feel different than skills necessary 15 or 20 years ago. You have probably noticed the pace of innovation, creativity, and seismic shifts in your own career field. This has implications for our work with students, not only now, but also in the future. The 10 guiding principles of Baker College were first articulated in 1996 in the process of writing the 1997 to 2007 strategic plan. The college added continuous improvement as an 11th guiding principle in 2010 in conjunction with its adoption of the Academic Quality Improvement Program or AQIP for its Higher Learning Commission accreditation. The guiding principles were used as the basis of the college's strategic vision for the 2007-2012 academic years. The title of the strategic vision was Driven by Mission, Guided by Principles. The guiding principles have become essential to the institutional life and culture of the college. They are embraced by faculty and staff and are the cornerstone of the college. The 11 guiding principles were revised by the college's leadership in 2012. Some minor adjustments were made, but the spirit and essence of the guiding principles remain remarkably intact and unchanged from the first publication in 1996. These principles are accessible, quality academic programs, disciplined fiscal management, service excellence, high work ethic, team-oriented, community-based, adapt and change, strong image, accountable for mission, values, and public trust, and continuous improvement. As mentioned earlier, we adopted the Academic Quality Improvement Program, or AQIP, for our accreditation with the Higher Learning Commission in 2010. One of our first AQIP initiatives was the Academic Improvement Model, or AIM. The goal of the AIM initiative was to establish the philosophical foundation of what we, as an institution, believe quality teaching and learning looks like. This foundation has impacted how we design, develop, deliver, and assess curriculum to ensure that we are offering highly effective programs. The goal of the AIM initiative was to establish the philosophical foundation of what we, as an institution, believe quality teaching and learning looks like. This foundation has impacted how we design, develop, deliver, and assess curriculum to ensure that we are offering highly effective programs. In 2010, each campus was asked to select faculty to examine the question, what does quality teaching and learning look like? Not only from the instructor's perspectives, but also from the students' perspectives. Representatives from each campus then met numerous times to sift through the concepts 
and map out how they impact the Baker College institutional student learning outcomes. Faculty were intentional to integrate research on best practices in post-secondary teaching and learning. Results from this comprehensive project have influenced faculty hiring and evaluation, professional development, and identification of instructional resources. Ultimately, the area of quality teaching and learning is a fluid exploration of what the art of teaching is all about. In large part, this project has reaffirmed that a college education today must emphasize the development of 21st century skills and knowledge, foster deep learning and critical thinking, and be guided by a learner-centered instructional model. Quality teaching and learning, which focuses on student-centered and active learning, fits with who we are as an institution. In order to help students develop 21st century skills and knowledge, our focus on learner-centered instruction means that the student takes the primary responsibility for their learning and the faculty is responsible for facilitating quality learning experiences. This may look and feel somewhat different than what you and I experienced in college. As an institution, we are committed to providing quality education and training for our students in the 21st century and continuously seek ways to improve what we do to meet stringent career and accreditation standards. We ask all of our faculty to be willing to explore, encourage, and implement quality teaching and learning experiences for our students. The second key area AIM addresses is assessment. Typically, when we hear the word assessment, quizzes and tests come to mind. However, for Baker College, assessment is so much more. In our continuous quality improvement efforts, we view assessment as more than just a classroom exercise. We encourage continuous exploration into whether each program is meeting its goals. If we're not meeting those goals, what do we need to change? How will we know if the changes are effective? Is an assessment really measuring what we want it to measure? In other words, are our assessments reliable? Are they valid? In the classroom, whether it's on ground, distance learning, or online, we also need to know if how we are measuring student learning is in fact measuring what we want it to. How will we know the students know and are able to do what's needed in their 21st century careers? If students are not understanding the necessary concepts, then what? Do we need to reteach something and then reassess the learning? Perhaps we need to learn new or different ways to teach the concepts. In any case, to best prepare our students to be competitive and successful in their career fields, we want to make sure we can accurately measure their knowledge and skills. This may mean that how or even whether tests are given may look different. Because some accrediting agencies require certain state or national certification exams, some assessments might resemble these formats. For some careers, work products or portfolios might be more appropriate. For others, it might be a hands-on assessment. Almost all careers today require excellent writing skills, so we need to make sure we are including this in our assessments. Our goal is to have a variety of methods that measure student learning that most closely resemble real-world or authentic assessments. For faculty assessment, we have changed how we're coaching and evaluating our faculty and whether they are gaining the knowledge and skills to teach for 21st century careers. As we think about the implications of assessment, we'll be providing professional development and tools for this critical area, not only at the program level, but also for the classroom. This will be an ongoing effort as part of AIM. Curriculum development ties it all together. Curriculum is designed with the end in mind where content and instruction are designed to support quality teaching and learning as well as assessment. 
This is a curriculum process that leads to shared resources and a greater degree of rigor. One of the most common statements we hear from both brand new faculty and those who have taught elsewhere is an appreciation that at Baker, they don't have to create their courses from scratch. This is another unique characteristic of life at Baker College. Using research-based practices, we invest heavily in curriculum development to ensure rigorous academic standards and consistency of delivery, regardless of campus location or delivery format. From our mission and in institutional student learning outcomes, to program outcomes, to individual course student learning outcomes, our approach has an intentionality that is unmatched in higher education. Whereas the quality teaching and learning component is about the art of teaching, the curriculum development process at Baker is more about the science of teaching or the practical instructional methods. Our institutional student learning outcomes or ISLOs correlate to the research 21st century skills. Regardless of whether a student is in an associate, bachelor, or graduate level program, our goal is that students will demonstrate these outcomes by the time they complete their program. In our efforts to improve and maintain effective programs and delivery systems, the decision was made that an intentional, consistent design process needed to be used based on what the students need to know and be able to do. We determined that the Understanding by Design or UBD curriculum development model would best fit Baker College's purposes for effective delivery of academic programs. As an institution and in our classrooms, we are always trying to get better for the singular goal of preparing our graduates to be successful in challenging and rewarding careers. Hopefully you've started to see how the three elements of the Academic Improvement Model Initiative, quality teaching and learning, assessment of learning, and curriculum development all fit together. We think you'll recognize that it's not really a linear process. Quality teaching and learning both impact and are impacted by curriculum development and assessment. Assessment helps us deliver curriculum and measure if it's effective, and developing curriculum to meet 21st century needs is essential to quality teaching and learning. Obviously, the most important knowledge and skills that students will need in your individual classes are tied to the Course Student Learning Outcomes, or SLOs. Ultimately, the SLOs are what must be mastered in any given course. Think of your SLOs as the main floor of a house where most of the living takes place. But beneath that is the foundation of the ISLOs. We encourage all of our faculty to be creative in threading learning experiences into your course, not only to meet the SLOs, but also to develop these deeper outcomes for all of our students. Canvas is Baker College's Learning Management System, or LMS. In order to fully facilitate well-rounded learning for all students, Baker College has the professional expectation that all faculty will include at a minimum the following four components, grades, assignments, announcements, and discussions. A few items regarding Canvas. Whether you are teaching your course on ground or distance learning, Canvas is used as a supplement to classroom instruction. Using Canvas provides tools to facilitate communication outside of scheduled class time and office hours, which enhances student-to-student -student and faculty-to-student communication, increases the availability of online materials, these materials are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ensuring that students always have access to grades, assignments, and discussion. Encourages online discussion between class sessions, allowing you to identify areas of where students are having trouble so you can address it in class. Simplifies management and administration of the course 
through tools such as grades, discussions, posting announcements, and posting external sources. Baker College is committed to enhancing workplace readiness by preparing graduates with career-ready skills. The proficient use of mobile and portable devices enhances the learning environment by providing opportunities to collaborate and connect with other campuses, teams, students, faculty, and employers, both inside and outside of the classroom. Therefore, Baker College requires each student to come to class prepared with a mobile or portable web-enabled device capable of supporting the instructional expectations of the course. As a faculty member, this means you need to consider ways to engage your students using computers, educational technology or ed tech tools, and other learner-centered instructional strategies. With students bringing computers to class, it is important to remember that you can have students work collaboratively on a document through Google Docs, do research through eLibrary resources, create a presentation using Google Slides, you can also use EdTech polling tools, or have students fill out a survey at the end of class through Google Forms. Essentially, instructors are expected to infuse technology into their lessons. As we move through these modules, you will be directed to resources where you can find more information on using these tools. When we discussed assessment, it was mentioned that we have changed how we're coaching and evaluating our faculty. Historically, the faculty evaluation process has not been able to inform system-wide professional development of new and established faculty regarding learner-centered instruction, curriculum, assessment, and general professionalism. We have adopted a coaching and evaluation process known as the Faculty Growth and Evaluation Process, or FGEP. Through this process, a faculty developer will observe you in your classroom within your first semester of teaching to support your instructional growth. You should also expect to create a professional growth plan, or PGP, within your first year as an instructor at Baker College. The purpose and goals of the faculty growth and evaluation process is to support continuous improvement of quality teaching and learning in our classrooms. Assist faculty with providing authentic experiences for our students. Focus on student learning. Engage faculty in best practices. Use multiple sources of data for faculty growth. Engage faculty in deep conversations on quality teaching and learning. In addition, the following points should be noted regarding the faculty growth and evaluation process. We stress that this process is about improving teaching and not pure evaluation. This is not about being defensive and justifying behavior and is not to be about just completing paperwork to satisfy human resources. The same observation, evaluation instrument, and scale will be used for all faculty. It should be anticipated and communicated that a new faculty member may not meet expectations in some areas during their first Baker teaching experience, especially considering Baker's adjunct faculty model where we hire faculty members with no prior college teaching experience, but hire for expertise in the content area. We need to be clear that receiving a does not meet expectations is okay. Our goal is to move everyone forward from their current skill level. If we could get all instructors into the meets expectations category, we will be thrilled. There are no numbers associated with the faculty observation scale. This is intentional. There is no summer average. Instead, we are focused on the category title and what we can do to help faculty improve their teaching. This concludes our session.
Please remember to complete the quiz to check for understanding.